Councils are going to vote next week on whether to adopt a national cat strategy, which could include a registration fee for domestic moggies and the employment of cat rangers. Local government New Zealand President Lawrence Yule says current rules don't allow councils to control cats. And seven of New Zealand's 78 councils, led by Dunedin and Auckland, supported a remit to develop a cat strategy. I asked Mr Yule what the remit would mean. Uh, the remit says that a national um, strategy be developed for the management of cats, uh, principally to support uh, New Zealand's biodiversity. So it's not it's not a remit to have a go at you know what are very good companion animals for people. It's a it's a remit to have a go that are uh, homeless or feral cats, and trying to develop a strategy that that will you know deal with them really in a better way than we currently are. Okay, but part of the strategy involves registration and a fee of eighty dollars. Well, I don't think any of those details have been sorted out yet. Um, that those are those are potential options, and very much like we do with dog registration. But effectively, at the moment, territorial authorities have no control over cat management unless they pose a risk to human health. Really, um, and regional councils have somewhat control over feral cats if they're a pest. But in the middle there, there's a whole group of cats that have no control over them whatsoever. Uh, and they are domestic animals that have homes and by and large are staying in them? Some are, yes, and that certainly the target is, is not for them. Um, I think this is a pretty pragmatic approach. Um, the SPCAs tell us that there are, you know, there are growing numbers of cats. There are actually too many cats in New Zealand and it's a difficult thing to deal with. They're spaying as many as they can. They're rehoming as many as they can. So this is not an attempt to have a go at your loved moggy. It is an attempt to try and deal with the cats that are wandering around communities, particularly in urban environments where they are causing major damage to the, the biodiversity or the bird life. OK, Dunedin uh, proposed the remit, Auckland seconded it. Then what were the other five councils that have supported uh, it so far? Rangitiki, Palmerston North. Uh, I can't remember the others, right. actually, off the top of my head. Uh, that's, that, that, that's all right. But uh, what is required to make this something that would become binding nationally? Uh, well, all this does really is determine the position of local government New Zealand as, a, as an organisation. And then if this was the position that the members want, then we would go and discuss options with central government. So it's really just a formative part of this process. Um, you know, many councils would like to do this to also support the predator-free New Zealand by 2050. Um, now, that, that process is largely around rats, uh, stoats and possums. But in an urban environment, the Parliamentary Commissioner has said that, that you know, domesticated or feral cats both cause uh, a significant loss of biodiversity. The, the, yeah, absolutely. But there's two quite separate conversations taking place here, isn't there? And I can see why people might be confused about this. One, the conversation is how do we stop cats eating birds? And, and two, the conversation is how do we enforce some kind of registration on a domestic moggy at the cost of $80? And well, we don't know whether it's going to be $80, John. I mean, I, I understand that that's what some people are saying, and that will all be part of the argument as to whether, in fact, this is an overkill or not, whether, in fact, domestic moggy should be uh, registered or but, not. Because the cat doesn't know, does it, that its owner's paid 80 bucks? <laughs> no, I, mean, it I just, I just don't know how that would stop cats eating birds. Uh, no, no, I, I agree with that. Um, I, I, yeah, and that's all part of, you know, I imagine this will be a very lively debate at our conference. I know one would argue we might have other more important things to deal with, but I think in terms of a remit at our AGM, this, all these issues will be, be well debated, which is why I can't tell you what the position of the sector will be following that discussion. How do we police cats? And... Everyone has a different opinion on cats, and we always talk about Gareth Morgan, and that is one end of this paradigm, the spectrum, and then there are people who love their cats and will hear no ill spoken of them full stop. How do we get the balancing act right? We have dog ranges now. Are we talking potentially about cat ranges going round and rounding them up if they're out and, 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 and apparently up to no good? Uh, John, I think that's, a, that's an extreme um, end of it. Um, I think this is exactly why the conversation is important because it is not going to be easy. We we manage dogs largely to protect human safety um, and to protect. Um, in the old days, it was disease control, but now it's largely for human safety. Cats are not posing a risk for human safety; they are posing a risk to biodiversity. And the, the community and the population of New Zealand is going to have to have a conversation about to what degree do we try and sort of, you know, manage cats as a trade-off to some biodiversity upside. 
and I can't give you what that balance is because there'll be a number of councils who say we don't want to have anything to do with the management of cats. You know, we've got enough things to worry about. Uh, they are, you know, much loved by many people as companion animals. Why do we want to even get in that space? There'll be some other councils that say actually biodiversity is really important to us and we do want to do something. And really that's what this remit process is about, trying to understand what the sector's view is. Lawrence Hill, the President of Local Government New Zealand.